You want into Diamond City, right? What? Who are you? Shh. Play along. What? What's that? You said you're a trader up from Quincy? You have enough supplies to keep the general store stocked for a whole month? <laughs> you hear that, Danny? You gonna open the gate and let us in, or are you gonna be the one talking to crazy Myrna about losing out on all the supply? Jeez, all right. To make it personal, Piper. Give me a minute. Better head inside quick before old Danny catches on to the bluff. <sighs> Sounds good. Let's go. Another great day in Diamond City. Monsieur, may I borrow you for a moment? I have some time. I've spent much effort gathering information in our travels so far, and my self-diagnostics have come to a green conclusion. It is not lack of data or lack of collaboration which stifles my scientific progress. The inescapable truth is there has never been a great robot scientist. I'm sure your research isn't that bad. You are polite to say this, but if something does not change, my efforts will be mere stagnation. The greatest scientific minds of history, the Einsteins and the Curies, my namesake, have had something beyond raw data analysis capabilities. They have had a spark. This elusive inspiration is something I must possess. So, how are you going to do that? If I am to advance my understanding of medicine in this strange world, I must embark on a great adventure. I must become human, or as close as I can. I must find a way to download all that I am into a human brain. I'm willing to help, Kiri. And you save me once again. If you find someone, a brain surgeon, an artificial intelligence programmer, or someone who is an expert in matters of the head, please bring me to them. Piper, who let you back inside? I told Sullivan to keep that gate shut. You devious, rabble-rousing slanderer. The level of dishonesty in that paper of yours. I'll have that printer Ooh, scrapped that a statement, for parts. Mr. McDonough? Tyrant mayor shuts down the press. Why don't we ask the newcomer? You support the news? Because the mayor's threatened to throw free speech in the dumpster. Always believed in freedom of the press. Without free and unbiased information, an electorate's decisions would be all wrong. Oh, I didn't mean to bring you into this argument, good sir. No, no, no. You look like Diamond City material. Welcome to the great green jewel of the Commonwealth. Safe, happy, a fine place to come. Spend your money, settle down. Don't let this muckraker here tell you otherwise, all right? What are you two arguing about, anyway? What do you think? Print lies and everybody's happy, but if you print the truth... <laughs> <laughs> now, was there anything particular you came to our city for? I'm trying to find someone. Trying to find someone? Who? My son, Sean. He's less than a year old. Wait, your son's missing? Oh, you hear that, McDonough? What's Diamond City Security doing to help this man, huh? This isn't the first missing persons report to come through here, and now we have an infant who's been taken? No, don't listen to her. Well, I'm afraid that our security team can't follow every case that comes through. I'm confident that you can find help here. Diamond City has every conceivable service known to man. One of our great citizens can surely find the time to help you. Well, sure. And a mayor of a great city must know everyone. Who can help me? Well, uh, uh, there is uh, one private citizen 
Nick Valentine, a detective of sorts who specializes in tracking people down, usually for debts or whatnot. No, I have to get going. I'm sorry, Diamond City Security doesn't have time to help, but I'm sure Mr. Valentine charges a reasonable fee. This is ridiculous. Diamond City Security can't spare one officer to help. I want the truth, McDonough. What's the real reason security never investigates any I've had enough of this, Piper. From now on, consider you and that little sister of yours on notice. Yeah, keep talking, McDonough. That's all you're good for. <laughs> I'm impressed. Not everyone can claw information out of McDonough's tight-fisted hands. Hmm. Why don't you stop by my office after you see Valentine? I think I just found my next story. Officer, head on inside. <clears throat> hey. Danny. So, you're that traitor Piper was talking about. Something tells me she's pulled the wool over my eyes again. Am I right? I didn't mean to lie, officer. It all just happened so fast. <sighs> You're not the first guy Piper pulled into a heap of trouble he wasn't ready for. Thanks for being honest. If it were up to me, we would have just let the both of you in. But the mayor's calling the shots, and... Well, you saw how mad he is. Anyway, welcome to Diamond City and all that. I gotta get back to work. Hey, Sullivan. Can't talk. All this chatting is gonna tarnish my tough cop persona. Game? How exciting! Piper, back. Hey, kiddo. How are the paper sales? Well, the presses are getting overloaded. That motor is going to go soon if we don't replace it. Ah, uh, you've been saying that for weeks and the old girl still keeps cranking. Stop worrying so much. I gotta head into the office. You start whistling if you see any angry politicians coming our way. Why? Is something wrong? Piper? To newcomers, if the Institute grabs you in the night, at least we warned you. The Institute? You ain't heard of the Institute, mister? 
They snatch people up in the night and no one hears from them again. It's all in the paper. Better read up before they grab you, too. I believe you. Thanks. You are a real lost lamb in the wolf's den, mister. That secretary of his, her and her perfect hair. Mm-hmm. The mayor's secretary. Come on, Ma. I cut her hair myself, and I know human hair. That's just it, Johnny. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference. If you nick McDonough with your razor, he'd bleed. Don't mean nothing. Hmm. Hey, who wants to look beautiful? Hairstyles from across the Commonwealth. Read the public and be prepared. Hey there. Well, hello there. Another one of the poor and stupid of Diamond City come begging for table scraps? Well, I do need some help. I knew it. Let's see. I have a few caps to spare. Here, take it and make yourself scarce. Who are you, anyway? Anne Codman of the Codman family? Of the upper stands? If you haven't heard of us, that just shows how unimportant you are. Now, were you leaving or not? And miss basking in your delightful personality? Do what you like, but I'm done talking to you. Around here, we call your haircut the Scav Special. Little flecks of blood, give it the personal touch. You should think about getting a trim. What are my options? You name it. Shaves, long cuts, short cuts, braids, layering. Eh, be easier just to show you. Got an empty chair right here. Let me think it over. I got you. No problem. Uh, <clears throat> you there. Talk some sense into my net with son. McDonough's secretary, is she a synth? No idea. You don't know? What? Born without a brain between your ears? You just said that no one could tell the difference, Ma. He don't know if Geneva's a sin, and neither do you. So could you lay off? Don't you talk to your mother that way, Johnny. Hey there. I got an empty chair here just waiting for some beautiful customer to get a haircut. I'll think about it. I got you. No problem. Hey, Scaver. Got plenty of Brahmin meat on the hooks. Wait, what kind of meat is this? You never heard of Brahmin? Big, dumb, got four legs and two heads? They're the only cattle around. Everything's fresh from the Codman family farms. Sometimes, they get weird stuff from the caravans, too. Weird stuff? Weirder than two-headed cow meat? Yeah, Prince Charming. Weirder than that. Mirelurk bloat flies, Brad stags. It's all protein, right? Ain't like you can be picky in the Commonwealth. Just looking. Hmm. Don't let the stress of life kill you. Relax with some cams. Who needs a haircut? Everyone Officer. needs a haircut. What kind of person pals around with a robot? Oh my god. You're not a cent, are you? I hear there's a bar in the old theater district that's for raiders only. A combat zone. I'd stay clear if I was you. Hey, officer. Now a swatter. That's a real weapon. Talk to Mo Cronin. He'll fix you up. Probably nothing. But some guy came into town, said he picked up a weird distress call in the Cambridge ruins. Where it is... Something bad went down in the old Museum of Witchcraft up near Salem. Why would anyone even go there? Been abandoned forever. 
Officer? If you're hungry, you can grab a quick bite of power noodles. Just talk to the robot. Newcomer, huh? Talk to Abbott at the wall if you want a history lesson. The Institute? <laughs> I ain't scared of them. No, really. I swear. Hey, officer. Nice night, huh? Wanna do something fun? Run the bases. Trust me. Uh, <clears throat> you read the paper? Damn sense. Hiding among us. Doc. A new patient. A new file to open. Do you have a legitimate medical concern? Or is this about our facial reconstructive services? Facial reconstruction? What's that? Uh, it's Doc Crocker's specialty. If you're interested, talk to him about it. Just head through the door with our logo on it. No, if you have an actual medical problem, speak up. So what kind of treatments are common around here? Bandaging wounds and cleaning radiation exposure are the most common things you outsiders usually ask for. That and kicking a chem habit. Could use some supplies, actually. Uh, let's see what I can spare. Mentats, bump out, stim packs, jet, everything to even you out. You look like you need a prescription filled. Something to settle your nerves, let you chill. Did you say something about drugs? That's right. All the chems you need to fill out your lifestyle, balance you out. Everyone here buys from me. Sometimes security needs a little psycho, or an engineer needs some Mentats. And heck, Rad X is plain universal. Looking for a job, if you got one. Yeah, I got something. Looking for a mutated fern, if you find any. I hear some grows out near Forest Grove Marsh. Natural radiation sucker. Be great for cooking Rad X or Rad Away. Sweeten the deal with some money, and I might be interested. All right. How about 125 caps? Come on. Make it worth my while, Solomon. You are one righteous talker. 150 caps. I'll walk out right now, if you don't make me a real offer. 200. That's all I can pay. I swear. Mutated fern. Sounds good. Cool. Solomon. Gotta pick me up if you're feeling glum. Let's see what you got. Got your fix. Excuse me. Don't bother, pal. I ain't seen nothing, I ain't heard nothing. Got too much dirt in that hair? Get it trimmed. You won't regret it. <clears throat> this whole market smells like noodles and blood and shampoo and ammo. Money, Do yourself a favor and just say yes. What are you saying? It's all Money, he understands. Tell me a joke. Money, 
No thanks. Hey. Don't know you, Scaver. Don't let down the home team by a swat out! So thirsty. Doctor says I can't drink liquor no more. Cola. Need a Nuka Cola! Nice hey, man. Sheffield. Need a drink. Nuka Cola. Nuka Cola. You there! You need a genuine, authentic, custom made hickory swatter. What's a swatter? <laughs> Rookie, eh? A swatter, my friend, is a Diamond City tradition. See, it used to be that this whole place was a stadium, and two teams would meet and play a game called baseball. One team would beat the other team to death with these things called baseball bats, and, and the best bats were called swatters. True fact. Oh, really? What kind of teams were there? There was the Diamond City Demolishers, big brutes of guys, uh, played in full power armor with special pneumatic arms you know, for swinging. Then you had the Lexington Ladies, an all-female team, with Coach Bloody Mary Sue at the helm, highest kill count in the league. Ha, I could spend all day talking about the Concord Crushers ooh, or the Quincy Killmeisters, but you get the idea. Uh, it was a hell of a sport. Look, dumbass, that's not how baseball was played. That right, Mr. Smarty Pants? Hey, if you're such an expert, how do you think it was played? There were balls, strikes, three bases, and home runs. You kept score by how many runners made it to home plate. As far as sports go, it is fairly straightforward. I like my version better. Now, can I interest you in these genuine, authentic, custom-made hickory swatters? Got any work? Well, if you want to help the sport, I got a lead on a stash of pre-war collector's items. Coach, quitting his for punks westing, had an estate not too far from here. Legend says when he retired, the league presented him with a baseball, catcher's mitt, and playing card signed by all the other coaches. See where I'm going with this? I'll pay 100 caps each for those relics. What do you say? 100 caps seems light. I need more. <laughs> I like your moxie. We'll make it 125 caps apiece. How's that sound? Please. You own a whole store. You can do better. Look at that fire in your eyes. <clears throat> All right. 150 caps for each piece. And you better be worth it. Deal? You're holding out on me, Mo. Come on. Show me you're serious. Oh, if only Ice Ice Julie could see that steely gaze of yours. <laughs> she might have finally met a match. You win. Oh, 200 caps each. But that's my final offer. You taken or leaving? What did you need again? Simple. Go to the old Westing estate and look for a baseball. A baseball card and a baseball mitt, with signatures on all of them. A card, a mitt, and a ball, got it. I thank you. And baseball thanks you. Hey, Mo. Here to pick up a swatter, right? Let's see what you have. The genuine articles.
do something fun? Run the bases. Trust me. as many indigenous life forms as possible. It is, of course, for science. Get your copy of the public. We expose the truth behind the Institute. Self-prescribed Kim, as recommended by me, myself, and I. We got small arms, long arms, ammunition. Uh, hello. Have you been here before? Might have. Don't be cute. First things first, this isn't a charity. You want the clothes? Pay for them. No mooching. Got it. Good. Now that we understand each other, welcome to Fallon's. Happy to show you everything in stock. Fallon's Basement. Interesting name. Yeah, it's ancient. There was a Fallon's here back even before the war. Granddad always said we had a tradition of quality and affordability. Guess affordability got too expensive for some folks. Damn thieves. And it ain't like Diamond City Security helps. Why doesn't Diamond City Security help you? <sighs> My husband got taken, all right, by the Institute. Security wouldn't look into it. I raised a stink, and now I'm blacklisted. Your husband was taken by the Institute? Well, he ain't here anymore, that's for sure. Not like the Institute leaves a trail besides those damn synths. What do you know about synths? Just what I read in the papers. That the Institute builds them, and some even look human. So much you can't tell the real difference. Lucky me, huh? Institute takes my Charlie, doesn't even bother replacing him. I'll take a look, sure. A paying customer. Finally. Don't move, Synth. What have you done with the real Riley? Where's my brother? I swear, I'm not a Synth. Don't shoot, for God's sakes, we're family! Put the gun down, now! He's a Synth! He'll kill us all! Kyle, no! Okay, show's over. There are no Synths in Diamond City, hear me? Just you folks and your damn paranoia. Officer? I need you to step away, Scaver. I understand, officer. I just want to know what happened. What, you didn't hear the shouting? Guy pulls a gun on his own brother, thinking he's a synth. It's that newspaper's fault. Got people all riled up, thinking their own family might be replaced by machines. Look, I'm sorry you got caught up in all this, but it's over, okay? Just go about your business like nothing happened. Better that way. Hey. He pulled a gun on me. My own brother. You're safe now. That's all that matters. I'm... I'm not a synth. I... 
I told him. I, I kept telling him. Why didn't he listen to me? I, uh... I need a minute. What's everyone still standing around for? Go back to your own damn business. University? You're not serious, right? I can't believe you eat that food. Only one thing worth buying in a dugout in, and that's the bulls. Man's gotta eat. What can I say? A real Diamond City boy eats at the noodle stand. You got a staring problem? Hey, officer. Word of advice. Never call your mother a synth, unless she really is one. Thanks. Polly. Get lost. Excuse me. Got a reason for bothering me? Get lost. Hey, Mo. Oh, wait, son. You bother me. But a smile. When the out comes, the most dangerous of all sea monsters, a mire lurk. A mire lurk? Come on. That's like two out of ten points of danger tops. Now, if you want to talk something really deadly, redeem. I forgot you were there yet, Finn. What is it? You know what? Never mind. I'll handle it myself. You ain't gonna last once you leave the walls, so don't get chummy. You have marvelous bone structure. Stop by the mega surgery sometime. Hi there. You can order drinks and food here or at the bar. Who owns this bar, anyway? The Bobrov brothers picked this place up a few years ago. Uh, the Dean Bobrov is the loud one, Yefim Bobrov is the quiet one, and I'm the one that has to listen to them argue with each other all day. I'll think about it. All right, hon. Customer. Need a room? What's the story with this place? Not much to say. We sell food, drink, and rooms. Mainly for traders that come to the area. My brother Vadim runs the bar. Scarlet's our waitress, and she helps me keep the rooms clean. As much as they can be. All right. Here. You're in room two, just through the door.
Nice pit boy. <clears throat> yeah. See this bar? I killed a man for it. <laughs> no, no, I kid, I kid. <laughs> he is dead though. <laughs> now let me know when you're ready to order. So this your bar? Damn straight it is. My brother Yefim and I make the best moonshine in the entire Commonwealth. We call it Bobrov's Best. Had to start renting out rooms just so customers uh, had a place to safely pass out after drinking it. <laughs> I've got a few minutes to browse. Music to my ears. I ain't your friend, Scaver. Whatever it is, leave me out of it. Even though I'm a doctor, I admit I have a small vice. A quick drink. Don't get after used to work. Diamond City security being unhelpful. Just ignore him like I do. Miss? Ever been up in the stands? Let's just say they can afford a lot of clothes. I guess they were seen coming out of it already. Glad you dropped by. You holding up, Blue? My favorite ballpark's become a shanty town. So, today's been great. Interesting you mentioning that, seeing as you're from a vault. Yeah, you're not wearing the blue jumpsuit right now, but the pit boy and that fish out of water look? Dead giveaways. So here's the deal. I want an interview. Your life story in print. I think it's time Diamond City had a little outside perspective on the Commonwealth. You do that, and uh, I'll tell you what, I'll come with you. Watch your back while you get used to the world above ground. All right, Piper. I'm in. Good. Let's get down to business. So, I know you're from a vault. How would you describe your time on the inside? My family and I were frozen. I didn't spend much time in the vault. Wait, <laughs> they boxed you up in a fridge? The whole time? Are you saying you were alive before the war? The war? Which war? The one that gave us this lovely landscape of demolished buildings and nuclear radiation every 10 feet? You're telling me you saw everything before they blasted it into pieces? Yes. I'm over 200 years old. Oh my god. The man out of time. So, you've seen the Commonwealth, Diamond City. How does it compare to your old life? Honestly, seeing everyone surviving out here, rebuilding the world, it gives me hope. That's surprisingly inspired, Blue. We're definitely quoting that. Now, I already know you're looking for your son. Sean, do you suspect the Institute was involved in his kidnapping? The Institute? Who were they? That, Blue, is the biggest mystery in the Commonwealth. No one really knows who or where they are, but their handiwork is all over. Synths. Synthetic people. Sent from their hidden labs to do the Institute's dirty work. Sometimes they even replace a person with a synth double. 
A little covert agent no one would ever suspect. Now, not everything that goes wrong has the Institute behind it, but there's always a chance. That's why I'm asking. They make synthetic people? That's right. There are two major kinds you have to watch out for. The first is an obvious fake. Skin looks like plastic, skeleton might even be showing. You see groups of them scouring the Commonwealth, killing people and scavenging what's left. I reported on University Point a while back. <laughs> Whole town got cleaned out. The second type of synth is the real deal. With skin, blood, <laughs> warm smiles and guilty glances, just like a good old fashioned human. So do you think they could be involved? The Institute or one of their agents? I don't know. No one ever does. That's what makes them so scary. For the last part of our interview, I'd like to do something different. I want you to make a statement to Diamond City directly. The threat of kidnapping is all but ignored in the Commonwealth. Everyone wants to pretend it just doesn't happen. What would you say to someone out there who's lost a loved one but might be too scared or too numb to the world to look for them? No matter how much you want to give up, don't. You have to have hope that you'll see them again. Or at least, that you'll know the truth. A strong note to end on, Blue. Thanks. That's everything. It's gonna take some time to put this all together, but I think your story is gonna give Diamond City plenty to talk about. Anyway, I agreed to come with you, right? Watch your back? Just say the word when you're ready. I can't wait to see where this story goes next. Let me know if there's anything I can do to lighten the load, or, you know, if you need anything proofread. Hey, Piper. Heading my way? You sure you want to travel with me? Well, it's that, or get back to writing the paper. I guess the paper can wait. You know what? Never mind. You know where to find me. Anything I can do? You just say the word. Hey, I think those Bobra brothers are looking for you. Officer? Is that a pit boy? My left arm for one of those. Need new clothes? Should stop by Fallon's basement. Open during the oh, day. Oh, here we go. Quiet, Yiffy. All right, you. Tell me. Diamond City Radio? It's terrible, yes? It makes you want to cut your own ears off. So, what's the issue? Have you not listened? This DJ Travis, he is terrible. Makes me want to go back in time and prevent radio from ever being invented. Vadim! It's true! Don't listen to my brother! Someone needs to get rid of him! We need a new DJ for the radio! I don't think many would notice if he, you know, disappeared. Are you serious? Did we not just agree this is serious problem? Calls for serious solution. First, you get him to follow you out of town. All right, that's enough. Vadim isn't serious. He doesn't really want to kill Travis. Okay, what's really going on here? Sorry, we were just joking around a bit. <laughs> it's true. Only jokes. Travis is a good friend. Yefim and I worry about him. Well, Travis, he, he means well, but he does not have the confidence he needs for that job, or anything else, really. And so he's always awkward. He does not believe in himself, you see? He expects he will fail at everything, and so he does. Well, 
That can always be turned around. Exactly. This is what I'm telling Yefim. Go on, spoil sport. Go back to working. We will figure out how to help Travis. Come, you. Meet me in back room. We discuss plan. Busy here. Beat it. Ah, yes, you. Famous bobber of liquor, on tap all day. Let me think it over. Some other time, then. What do you want, Vadim? I am glad you are willing to help. Unlike my deadbeat brother! Travis is a good guy. He deserves better life. I'd be happy to help. Okay, so... Travis needs to believe in himself, yes? Believe he is capable of more. You know what works well for this? <laughs> a bar fight. Ever been in one? Haven't met a man I couldn't lay out. And this is a good thing. Excellent! Because you are going to help Travis win his first fight. <sighs> I want to stage fight here in dugout. Nothing too serious. Uh, we make sure Travis wins and feels good about himself after. I want you to be there to help make it look real. What do you think? Sound good to you? How would something like that even work? It makes sense, I promise. I have contacts, people I can count on. Real tough looking, but they will take a dive for money. They confront Travis here at dugout. You step in and give him push he needs to stand up to them. Then you and Travis take them down. Nothing gets too rough, and Travis is something he can feel good about. Simple, right? If the goons are getting paid to fight, I want some too. All right, fine. You get cut as well. One hundred cops. I thought Travis was your friend. Isn't he worth more than that? Do not think I miss your attempt to manipulate me. Fine. Two hundred cops. Come on. A guy who owns a bar has to have plenty of cash lying around. Ah! This is extortion! Three hundred cops, no more! Now you will help! I have everything ready by six o'clock. Travis should be here by then. You show up and it will go well. Promise! If you're hungry, we sell food, but you should... Have a nice day. Hey, Yefim. Just don't throw up all over my floors.
You make that robot yourself? You must be wicked smart. The Super Salon can give you the hairstyle of your dreams. I there was some to go trouble to the over at Vault 81. Sure, I can something afford the tap house. Quarantine? But the way those you know people about stare at you. Hey, Doc. You have marvelous bone structure. Stop by the mega surgery sometime. Rest me. Ain't. Hey there. Ever seen a Meyer lurk? Think a crab cross with the tank with a bad angle. The death claws where the real danger is. Don't try to outrun it. Just get something solid between you and it, then pray. Yeah, I'm the new guy. Well, it's good to have you here. Name's Arturo Rodriguez. If you need protection, let's talk. So you know weapons, huh? Listen, I can sell you guns, swords, whatever. And they'll keep you alive for sure. But the real secret is in the mods. The little personal touches. Install a scope, expand the clip size, whatever. You spend time with your gear, and you'll have the right answer to every problem. Anyway, let's get back to you and what kind of protection you need. I'll take a look, sure. Don't forget to stock up on ammo. You? I, I don't know you. Just keep your distance. Keep calm. I'm standing still. That's exactly what a synth would say. But I don't know. Are you really uh, human? Why would you think I'm a synth? Why wouldn't I? A synth looks just like a person. With hair and sweat and blood and everything. So, are you human or not? Human as the day I was born. Well... You do look human enough, but I'll be watching you. I have eyes like a... Well, they're good eyes. Got it? All right. We can do business, but no funny stuff. What kind of business you run in here, anyway? We buy and sell anything and everything. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day. The robot takes care of customers at night. Only one I trust to do it. At least I know he's a machine. Let's see what you got. Just don't call it junk. 